This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. I am Sean Anderson. You're listening to the Fast Break Podcast, and I am joined by Ricky Whitmer. What's up, guys? And Dave Oster. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. How's it going? <laughs> how, how are you guys? How are you I don't know. I'm doing pretty well. How are you doing? I mean, the thing that shocked me today is that I got here today, and usually I'm the first one here, but Dave was here before me, so not only has Dave been here for five straight weeks. He showed up he early. Was, he was here He's got early. The initiative, Sounds like so dedication nice. to me. Yeah, I mean, so... Dave's not only dedicated, he's here, he's ready. I'm ready to, you know, bash some trades in. Cal, watch out, he's coming for you. Yep, I mean, what was, on the way. I think we're 2,961 <laughs> away, so we're getting close here. And uh, I'm ready to bash some trades, and uh, we're going to jump right into it. Uh, trade deadline happened Thursday, and, you know, we got we to gotta talk winners and losers. We got to talk surprises. We got to talk sucked. all that. It sucks so much. I think the surprise was that everyone built it up to, like, Blake Griffin's going, Caleb's going. I feel like Boogie's this happens going. every year. It does. It's like everybody wants to see the big name move. I mean, last year, the, the big name was Drogic. So, I mean, and it, it was kind of a big move, but I mean, it wasn't like, you know, a superstar. Like yeah. Dwight Howard. He was a good K. player, Love. but he, yeah. Yeah. He, he obviously had an impact, but I don't know if it was like, you know, a star player. And I think the first ever trade deadline video, Ricky said, it's probably going to be Dinkers and Dunkers. And we got Dinkers mm-hmm. and Dunkers. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it was a very boring trade deadline. I was like refreshing in every class. Like, come on. When he's, oh, like, I know. who's getting traded? Who's getting traded? And who's you, getting traded? You shooting out teasers of, oh, this may happen. Like all those speculation well, ones. The thing that, out of the no, 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 yeah. no. The thing that was huge was, yeah, you send out oh Jaleel Okafor and then you're like well this is what could happen and I'm super excited I'm like cool we're gonna get Jaleel Okafor we're gonna get rid of Pogasol I mean I like Pogasol but we could have traded him to get somebody well, uh, well do you, let's start off with the losers then Ricky who's your loser because I, I think you're st- you're starting to go down that line see I'm in a tough place with the loser and the reason is I want to give my loser to the Toronto Raptors mm-hmm. because it's like what Dave said last week when we asked like well, who's the team that needs to make a move yeah Dave was it's the Raptors because mm. you have to right now with the roster that you have you are not going to beat the Cleveland Cavaliers yeah and a best of seven series it will be it, it, I don't think it's possible and they didn't make any move that's who I want to. But at the same time, I want to give it to the Bulls because they actually made a move and we got rid of Kurt Heinrich for nothing. Yeah. Captain. Yeah, we got rid of the captain, the I guy mean, who's we, most loyal to the team. We the, did, the team, before you, know. all you out there start typing ferociously in the comment section, I know we did go under the luxury no, tax we didn't. mark. No, we didn't. No, we, we just didn't? saved $2 million. No, we're still, yeah, no, we saved $3 million oh, and we're $2 million still above the luxury tax. See, so, so we traded some, nothing. Yeah, now so we nothing. traded someone who's been loyal to this team. I mean, he, yeah, obviously he's not providing that much to his team, but I mean, he's still a, a, a leader out there. If we need a man to bear hug LeBron James. He can guard LeBron James. Exactly. We don't that. need Jimmy if Jimmy's hurt. We, we need Kirk Heinrich out there. And, you know, Garpax didn't make a move or anything, but I'm not going to get upset about that. Yeah. Dave, who's your loser? Uh, my loser, you know, I want to go a couple ways. I, I'm leaning most heavily towards uh, the Grizzlies, though. This really? is a team that I feel like they're just adding gasoline to a dumpster fire at this point. <laughs> but this is a team with, okay, you already have Gasol who's injured. So you're like, all right, we're probably not going to make the push for the playoffs. So maybe we should, you know, reload, get young, get some assets on board. No, no, no. Let's add Lance Stevenson to this file. Let's add Chris Anderson. Let's go the complete opposite direction. Don't forget PJ Hairston. Well, PJ Hairston. Hold on, you gotta you gotta you gotta think though. So I mean, they're getting rid of Jeff Green and you're getting Lance Stevenson, who's an, an expiring contract, Chris yeah. Anderson, who's an expiring contract. I think PJ is an expiring contract, and you get a first round pick. So I don't think gri- gri- the Grizzlies are a loser, but I mean also that team has no shooting now. I mean, unless Lance Stevenson's gonna be chucking up threes, you don't really have a shooter. Stevenson's gonna shoot tw- like twenty to thirty times a night. Now. Exactly, because you get rid of Courtney Lee and Jeff Green, you're Which main I will shooters. Love. That's guilty pleasure. I will love watching that team because it's gonna be entertaining as all hell. Unless VC goes off, and which he's yeah. kind of starting to do, unless Vince Carter starts going off and yep. pulling back out the old uh, Jordans he brought out in uh, Toronto, I don't think he's really going to do anything. But I understand the Grizzlies losers, but I think I think Grizzlies won that trade with uh, the Clippers there. Really? Yeah, I was going to. Bring... I'm on the other end. I, See, I think Jeff Green I don't think has Jeff... proven he can perform under Doc, and you know Doc is like, I think I, I think Doc is hoping that he can pull some more production out. It's not mm-hmm. like Jeff Green was playing poorly. He was underperforming, and that, that's where I see there is the potential for the Clippers to get better because of this. They don't necessarily get worse because they're losing Lance because they weren't using Lance up to his potential anyway. Well, I, yeah, and that's why with me, the Grizzlies, 
that one deal I do like because now Lance gets to go to a spot where hopefully he's used correctly because what was it, a last week or two weeks when we talked about Lance? It was the Clippers don't use him, and they just started to use him because they needed to, and now it's like, okay, you can go to Memphis, you can get your minutes, Maybe be the guy you were in Indy. I say Jeff Green in his last ten he's putting up still like eighteen and five. So it's not like he's not like helpful. But the, the thing is, I mean, I, 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 he is an upgrade from Paul Pierce now because I mean, Paul, Paul Pierce, Pierce is too old. He's to just play. he's just too old. But I mean, looking at Jeff Green's stats, I mean, he's he's just significantly dropped off. I mean, even his three point percentage. I mean, yeah. he's shooting thirty percent from the three point line. And that's not what you want on this team. And obviously, I mean, you need you have JJ Redick, and JJ Redick's a knockdown three point shooter. Chris Paul is kind of developing his game there, so I mean, you don't need him. And you have Jamal Crawford, who's also a great shooter. But I mean, I, I feel like Jeff Green's. Uh, an improvement from Paul Pierce, but I don't think it's like you're improving your team that much, and you're also you're giving up a first round draft pick. And I mean, I, the I don't first think round it's... draft pick, I feel like that is the biggest like choice. It's is that the turning point for this team? Are they going? Is this their all in move? That's the thing. I don't think this is going to make them better than OKC. I don't think it's going to make them better than the Spurs or even the Warriors. I don't think they're really contending, and they're giving up a first round draft pick, which could have been useful to making your team even better and trying to get someone who could improve your team more than just a Jeff Green. Yeah. So I mean, in with Lance, I mean, he's out. Jeff Green's a better player right now in the current state. I mean, Lance Stevenson might develop into a better player, but I mean, he's 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 getting old anyways. But I mean, looking at Jeff Green, I just feel like. You know, you're not getting that much back with a first round draft pick, and you could have gotten him to improve that small forward position even more. I mean, I, I know he was gone before the actual trade deadline, but Tobias Harris was out there. He's mm-hmm. a better small forward. I mean, if you could have used that first round draft pick to try to get him away from the magic, I mean, you could have gotten more than just Jeff Green. And maybe Jeff Green might be the better player now, but Tobias Harris might develop into the better player. And I mean, he averaged 17 in a season. So, I mean, Tobias Harris, I mean, he's been in the league for like six years. Yet he's still only 23. So if you knew T- Tobias Harris was still out there, you could have made a move for him. That's true. That's true. But, I mean, Tobias Harris never played for Doc. Never beat Doc. <laughs> never played at Doc's house. Yeah, never played at Doc's house. he does not qualify to be picked up by Doc. <laughs> never played him in the playoffs because yep. the, the Magic were never in the playoffs. Exactly. Uh, I, I think my, my loser is going to be the Cavs. And ESPN has the Cavs as the biggest winner. But... I mean, you just get Channing Fry, and Channing Fry. I mean, you're, he's going to add more to this team than Anderson Barrage is going to add. That's all they needed, though, right? They were just looking for a three-point shooter. But like, I mean, before he used to be a three-point, well, like a good three-point shooter. Before we were talking about how Kyle Korver was their target. To me, this was just the Cavaliers saying we need to get something that we want. We need to get somebody who can maybe help us in that department. Channing Fry is, is shooting one of the best in, in one of the best times of his career. Forty three percent from the field and thirty nine percent from three. All so they need he, him to do is knock down he, shots. He's being efficient, but I still that's not going to win you a championship. That's right. not going to put you in the Warrior Spurs level because you know your problem wasn't you know bigs last time. It was just that well, the Warriors were a better team in the well, finals. Also, their biggest problem in the finals was they didn't have Kyrie. Well, yeah, true. They was, didn't have yeah, Kay Love. The they weren't healthy. So I yeah. mean, everything like they didn't need to make a big splash. They didn't need to trade. K Love, in my opinion, I don't think they needed to trade trade K Love, but I think you need a better improvement. I mean, you you, you could also like I mean, what? You, I mean, Chan, all right, Channing Fry, good move, but you also need to add something off that bench because you don't really have anyone on that bench can, that can really make an impact. I mean, you got you know, Jr. Do you think <laughs> fucking Jr. is like on and off every other night? Uh, Jr. is not an impact player. I mean, unless Jr. is you know going back to 2007 when he the feels like playing, he can play. Uh, all right, I was he, like he, he, made, the- he made us feel it. The uh, Bulls, say, yeah. he made us feel it in the playoffs. I mean, the end of the playoffs was fantastic for him. Mm-hmm. He just comes in, the game's already over, and he's like, fuck it, I'm dropping threes. The game's over, though. So, I mean, I know. it doesn't matter. I, I, think, I, I know. I think you need a score of it. You've got <laughs> Delhi, you have JR who's on and off. I mean, Shumpert's decent. But, I mean, you had Kyle Korver out there. I mean, I know he's having one of the worst shooting, shooting, uh, but a worst shooting, yeah, yeah shooting, shooting seasons of his career. But, yep. I mean, he can fucking light it up if he's if he's on so yep. i mean going to a winning environment going to the Cavs where he knows his role that might improve his game he might regain his confidence but i mean you could have gotten more you could have added more depth to make your team more dangerous and i feel like you fired david blatt because you want to win a championship because you can't beat these teams and your only moves channing fry i mean tyron Lou. i mean i don't think this is going to re- improve your team that much and channing fry is your only asset to give this kid guy i mean like He's going to get fired because he won't win a championship because I don't think he's, the, I don't the Cavs are good enough for this. I, I don't know if he'll get fired for it. 
I mean, in a couple of years. I'm not saying yeah. like right now, but I mean, he's not going to get fired after this season because they just brought him in. But I mean, he's get. I mean, he, he's not going to do anything that David Black didn't do. He's going to you know bring this team to the Eastern Conference Finals. They're going to win the Eastern Conference Finals, and then they're going they're going to lose to the Warriors. Mm. I don't I don't think this team can compete with the Warriors. I mean, with this Channing Fry deal. I the only thing I feel like with the Cavaliers that there's no deal that could have pushed them over the top against either I'll throw San Antonio in there too because to me it's Golden State San Antonio and then the Cleveland Cavaliers to me I think the biggest thing that's going to help Cleveland in the playoffs is like I said if they can stay healthy maybe not have to play Kelly Olynyk yeah the, I mean that, uh, that'll, 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 that'll be help. helpful that'll and help. Boston get rid, of, get, get rid of them so I mean but no I mean that that's a good question though as far as Cleveland what would it take for them to be put over the top to you know win that title do I mean, you think they needed that it, it might big be, move? It might be chemistry, I, but I mean, you don't really have. I mean, there's nothing that really defines this team. I mean, you have LeBron James, but yep. LeBron, we've seen LeBron. He can't do it all. He needs someone. And Kyrie, I mean, he's one of the best point guards in the league. But I, then again, when I, I watch the Cleveland Cavaliers, I don't see Kyrie making that much of an impact because it's LeBron's show and it's LeBron's game. And you know, K Love is you know re- delegated to just shoot threes basically. And you know, K Love is just a shell of what he used to be. And then you have this mess in, of big men's like all right, Mozgov. I mean, he's not really adding anything to this team. Thompson's just a rebounder. And then Channing Fry basically is just going to be doing what K Love's doing is standing outside. Like it's going to open the lanes to drive. Mm-hmm. You know, open the lanes for. K, uh, LeBron and Kyrie to drive in and maybe dish it out to them, but I mean, I don't think these are your your, your shooters to like make this team that much better. Because mm. I mean, Channing Fry, he's not a forty percent shooter from three point. Well, he's close, but he's not gonna. He's yeah, not he's do not it. the Channing Fry. He's getting of, older. You know, like three years ago on the Suns, where you know he worked well. I think three, maybe it might have been a little bit further, but yeah. The point is, he used to be a very good shooter, very reliable. He could go on hot streaks, but I feel like his playtime has decreased. He's gotten less opportunities. And you know what? He's not lighting up like he used to. So can he come in and do some spot-up work? Probably. I think that's totally Better the than the, the guy thing. they got rid of, Andrew yeah. Verja, who they Verja's contributions He was limited. rarely used because he's not a he's stretch no form. team mascot. Yeah. Well, kind of like Noah with, was for the Bulls. The he's the glue guy with of that the team. What I want to say is, I mean... Or was the glue guy. That's what I'm wondering right is, do you think yeah. that well, team chemistry gets worse now without Verja there? See, Cle- Cleveland won that trade. I'm not saying it was a bad trade. I'm not saying... You're talking but, but overall, saying, though. though yeah, they, yeah. I, that is your only move. That's what's the problem. Like, that's a good move to get Channing Fry, but that is your only move. Mm-hmm. I mean, and plus Verichau, I mean, oh, never mind. I was going to say, you know, he's gone. He, the Blazers waved him, so Cass can yeah. sign up, but there's the, the whole thing. You can't sign yeah, a player after you, you trade him. Yep. So, but I mean, I, I understand that Verichau, you know, there might be a, a lack of team chemistry there, but that's going to be Tyron's, Ty Lue's job there is, yep. to, is to build this team back up. I mean, that's your job as a head coach is to bring these players together. And I want to point out, I'm looking right now at ESPN, their winners and losers. Mm -hmm. And the thing I find interesting, and I'm going to read this quote, the other reason Cleveland is a winner is none of the other East contenders improved their team for a possible showdown in the conference finals. Really? That's why we're calling them a winner? But I mean, because no one else made a move in the East? Can, but your loser was going to be Toronto because they didn't make a move. Yeah, I know. The Celtics didn't make a move. So, I mean, that's honestly a fair point. See, the thing with the Celtics, like... It's, the, and I, the think, I think what he's pointing out... Yeah, make think, a big enough move in the right direction. I think what he's pointing out there is they're a winner because nothing happened yeah. at the trade deadline. You know so who, you're winning because there's going to be no competition. That's a default. That's like, come on, that's like yeah. saying Golden State wins because mm-hmm. they, guess well, what? We're still the best team. One of the winners is Golden State and San Antonio because they yeah. did nothing and no one else did anything. I'm going to throw out not a winner or a loser, but you know who's my biggest they got hosed this trade deadline? Hmm. The Bucks. You come <laughs> this close to a deal... To add the big star that one of the big stars that we wanted to move, mm-hmm. Dwight Howard, could have been moved, and you had to back out of the deal because Dwight's too much of a baby to say, fine, I'll opt in to my final year. I, I wouldn't call it being a baby. He's missing on free money. Yeah. I mean, you're going to get a ton of money. I really can't blame him. You're going to be playing in Milwaukee for two years. He yeah. probably doesn't want to play in Milwaukee. He probably wants to be on a team that's a contender, and Milwaukee is out of the playoff race right now. So, I mean, it's probably Milwaukee's fault that they're in Milwaukee. And that's the reason why. <laughs> that's true. That, that's, but that's, it's interesting that the really Greg Monroe thing kind of is like a failed experiment almost at this point. Yeah. I, I mean, but their star is Chris Middleton. I yeah. mean, and Jabari Parker is falling off. I mean, he he's not living up. He's not. And I mean, you look at Michael Carter Williams. He's gonna. He's probably a good bench player, but he's not a star on a team. Yeah. And they don't I mean, have a real head coach. 
Hey, they don't have Jason a real Kidd. Kid coach and Jason Kidd. <laughs> I, why did this turn into shit on the Milwaukee Bucks? But I mean, it's just so it's easy. Tr- it is. It's really easy. And I mean, how- I, on the other hand, though, I mean, Houston, I, I would call them one of the big losers out of this. They're stuck with Dwight Harden, who locker room cancer. Pretty Dwight much. Harden. Dwight Harden. God, they're just one man. <laughs> one man. Hey, if they could, if they could have moved Harden, I would have said go. Someone for said that. I mean, you, you can't win an NBA championship if those two are your best players on the team, or mm-hmm. if like Harden's your best player on the team, you're not going to win an NBA championship. Well, let's put it this way. Harden, that's, an interesting one. that's someone the, that's a, that's what someone on ESPN. The last said. time okay. Harden was on a team that was like consistently in the talk for a title. He was the third best player. And he choked like shit. Yeah, but he okay. was the third best player on that team. But you're the third best player behind two of the two no, of I five. No, yeah. I know. I mean, so you're literally like the seventh now. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you don't have to be the guy that has the ball in his hands all the time, James. Maybe he doesn't need to turn the ball over that enough too. to set a record in the NBA. <laughs> I mean, the the man is trying to one-handed, like, not one-handed, uh, one-man show yeah. Houston into the playoffs, like pure will, like you did last year, and and yeah. it's just it's not a good style of play, and it's not a way that you're going to successfully, you know, win a championship because there are these complete teams out there. There are the San Antonio, there are the uh, Warriors, the Warriors. I mean, there's no way you can go up against that with one person, and if you have to rely on uh, Dwight, it's like okay, you guys don't get along. One strike against you. He's also lower production this year than ever before. I think other than his rookie year. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, he's shooting 61%, which is great, but he's staying a foot under the basket. Come on. Yeah. And, I mean, we, we've been talking about losers for a while now, and I think the biggest winner is pretty obvious, for at least for me, it's the Detroit Pistons. Yeah. You get Tobias Harris, you get Dante Montanunas, you get, I mean, the uh, Marcus Thornton, not, not, not that, a huge yeah, thing, not but a huge it's thing. depth. But, I mean, you get rid of Brandon Jennings, who, I mean, you have Reggie Jackson, so you don't need Brandon Jennings. Exactly. You get rid of Ersan Ilyasova, who, I mean, Markeith Morris is better than him, so you're going to put him Morris now into the starting lineup. Or Marcus Morris, I'm sorry. You're going to put yep. Morris in the lineup, and you're going to start him, and you got Tobias Harris at the three, and he's better than, you know, Ilyasova or Morris. And then you get Monte Yunus, who could also be a stretch four. I mean, he has an injured back right now, but he can develop into one of the best stretch fours in the league. And the question is, how injured was he? Because, you know, it seemed like he had been out for quite some time, and there's no real talk about the the actual injury itself anymore. It's just, oh, well, he's going to be back soon. So yeah. maybe they were just kind of holding him until the deadline to make sure, you know, he didn't move, didn't range or anything. And that, that's, the, that's the thing. Like, when I talked about the Clippers, you give up a first-round mm-hmm. draft pick for Jeff Green, who... I mean, you know what you're getting in Jeff Green. Dante yeah. Montiunis, it's kind of a gamble, but if that gamble pays off, it, it could be, be huge. huge. So, I absolutely I mean, agree. I like, I like what Stan Van's doing. I mean, Stan, Stan Van's a fucking god he's, right now. He's doing better than what Doc Rivers is doing. and the G, He's better than Chip Kelly. I mean, he's doing the mm-hmm. GM head coach thing perfectly. Yeah. I mean, he's building this team, and there's only two players from that original team that he inherited, and that's Caldwell Pope, and that's Andre Drummond. Yeah. The one thing with the Rockets, though, that it's the only thing out of everything they did that I liked that they got was that first round pick from Detroit. That's it. That's the only good thing. It's going to be a late first, yeah. well, or it, a middle first. It's I should either going to be right as of right now. It's either going to be the last pick, one of the last picks last of the lottery, lottery yeah. or one of the first picks. I, after I think the with lottery. these moves, well, they're but not also be the lottery, but yeah. But also, you could say that. I mean, this might give the Pistons some life, and they might. And that's what I. Mm-hmm. They I'm might on run. That line. They might run in the into the playoffs. I mean, because. I think they're better than the, the Bulls right now. I I'll think they're be better honest, than the, the Hornets. Bulls, I think they're I, better than the Pacers. So I they think can, we're not going to make the playoffs. They can end up at a 4 To be fair, seat. we did just kick the living crap out of Toronto. Yeah, I know we'll that's maybe the wrong term, but yeah, I really we'll, enjoyed watching that happen. We'll, yeah, we'll, but we'll, we also we'll, got the shit we'll kicked see. out of us by the Cavs. Well, so, that happened. And that's, mean, right now, that's who we play in the first round. Right, yeah. but no, this, this is a Pistons team with youth and a whole ton of upside. I love it. I enjoy watching them play with their previous roster. I look forward to seeing this new roster meld. I would kind of compare them to maybe uh, maybe kind of like the Warriors in 07 where they upsetted the Mavericks in uh, when they're the 8th seed, or was that 2008? Around there, it was after it was after the Mavericks went to the finals. Was so, that the Elton Brand? No, that was Monte Ellis. Or no, Mon- it was Barry Davis. It was Barry Davis, Davis Warriors. Oh, there we uh, go. And they upset, you know, they, they were just this young team who came out of nowhere and upset uh, the, the number one seed Mavericks, or maybe like a Carmelo team where it was very young. You had Billups in there, but I mean, Drummond could be that that mellow player. Your JR is Reggie Jackson. So, I mean, no, there, this there's team, a ton of all. I feel like this team might actually make a push for the Western or the Eastern Conference Finals. I mean, I don't think they're going to win it, but 
I think you know, looking at Toronto, they don't really have a four. If Rosen, DeRozan, or Lowry get hurt, then you're basically screwed there. And you know, Boston, they don't have a real superstar. Isaiah Thomas might get stopped, especially if you have a point guard like Reggie Jackson who might be able to stop. I mean, I don't think Reggie Jackson's that great defensively, but maybe you'll be able to stop Isaiah Thomas. And then you look at Miami, they're hurt and they can barely score, so you can just light them up there. Atlanta again on the edge where I mean the fact that half your trade team was on the trade deadline exactly. I mean you, you can't have a whole lot of confidence in that locker room right now Pacers just Pacers are basically Paul George if Paul George is hot and then you have George Hill and Monte Ellis I mean they're yeah. and the, that's just a guard heavy team and then you have the Hornets where it's you know you have Kemba Walker Nicholas Batum and then really nobody else so I mean, looking at it, and you and killed Gil Chris is hurt. So yeah. I think the Pistons can make a run, and I think oh, they are. Yeah, they're dangerous. I think they're the huge winner here, and I don't think it's really anyone else is a big winner. I mean, I, I don't see anyone else who won who won at the trade deadline besides the D- Detroit Pistons. There's one team that I we haven't mentioned that I I would call them. This is me going on the loser side, but. The, or just so negative. Well, yeah, with, seriously. Well, everybody this, lost this trade except deadline the was, Pistons. This well, trade deadline was negative. I look at yeah. the Wizards, and it's like, why would you want to get a guy? Like Morris, who, to me, I see him choking out a teammate, and I go, no, I don't want that on see, my team. See, I understand that, but you're also getting him out of that situation. And maybe, I mean, this is just this is a maybe. This isn't really what's going to happen. But maybe, yeah. you know, Gortat can maybe, like, bring back the Magic because they played with the Suns together. It's true. So, And plus, he's not with his brother, so I can see why you're saying mm-hmm. that he might be a cancer to this locker room. But, I mean, also, the Wizards aren't contending. The Wizards are at the well, bottom of the Eastern Conference. And I'll be honest, I just looked into it, and there's one positive from this deal. Chris Humphreys is not on the team anymore. It added enough wiggle room for if they wanted to go after KD. Oh, so see, it's a KD push pick. Okay. See, but mm-hmm. also, is KD going to want to come there with Juwan Blair off the team? Juwan Blair was the magic of the Wizards. Really? I don't know. I love okay. Dwan. I, I, I'm just a huge nice Mr. Pun. Not a pun there. I'm a huge Juwan Blair fan. Mr. Noni's? <laughs> Blair. How can you love that, man? Have you ever watched Juwan Blair's highlights? Mr. Like, Pitt at least Panther? from Pitt? Or, okay, his or, Pitt ones, yes. Or, or even early Suns. Like, this kid was dominant. Uh, he was great. The, Sp- the Spurs bring out the best of everyone. Uh, but anyways, I'm getting off Juwan Blair. <laughs> I think the Suns are my winner because they get Juwan Blair. But anyways, <laughs> what's the biggest surprise of this trade deadline? That no, I I want to say that no big stars. I thought we'd get one, either a Dwight, either a Boogie. Either I think Dwight Rudy was gay. Yeah, part of me, even, I, yeah, Rudy Gay might have yeah, been even big. Even too. part of me was like, even if like the Bulls did do a Pogasol trade, I wanted that one. Just give me one, and it was a surprise that we did. Was okay. Was I expecting? Like I said, Dinkers and Dunkers. Yes, but I still wanted to see a big. Big trade, and I was surprised that we didn't even get a medium-sized trade. Just a bunch of minor tweaks to teams, mm-hmm. hopefully to, you know, just get them enough. And I it's mean, like, mm, even Ryan so. Anderson was highly speculated to leave. Didn't go. I mean, that and might even talked, be, that I, might I, I the biggest move. his own value, though, like, yeah. with the amount of talk in public. So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't understand, like, there was no move, really. I mean, maybe Jeff Green was the biggest name to be moved. Maybe Tobias Harris was the biggest Lance name to be Stevenson. moved. Stevenson. Well, yeah, Jeff Green last yeah. season. That yeah. was probably the biggest, one of the biggest trades, just because mm-hmm. those names are so you know, right. prevalent. I mean, and I, and then the next question uh, is, which what what has who has the most uncertain future going forward? And I think we kind of touched that and that with the Bulls. And I don't think are anyone we talking would disagree. future is like future years or yeah, just future as like, a franchise. As a franchise, I think I think we touched on it earlier. The seventy sixers. That's to me like they, they why? really they why made, was the six, they the made one trade and I mean. To I was ex- just I just if you say future I'm going with them because I, I think, think trust the process and I don't believe it. I think the future is kind of bright for them because you got Ja, you got Nerlens. We'll then, see. And we'll then you see might have I don't Nerlens. know the future LeBron James and Ben they, Simmons. To me, and, yeah. I look I look directly at the Bulls because the Bulls the Bulls this, oh, this, this not, high their franchise is yeah. not in good territory. This high either. franchise you trade Kirk Heinrich, which I mean he wasn't there for the future, but you don't make a move. For the future, like trading a Paul Gasol and trying mm-hmm. to get picks for that. I mean, I don't understand it. And then obviously, a guy who's going to opt out at the end of the year. Yeah, and likely. And, and, and Doolittle from ESPN makes one of the great points. You're relying on D Rose. Yeah. I mean, D Rose, fantastic player when he's healthy, but that health factor is one of the biggest things in the NBA. Jimmy and Butler look, is your he's father. He's been healthy, but Jimmy's and we hurt. still lose. I know. So, and yeah, and he's healthy and he's still losing yeah. because, I mean, Paul doesn't fit this system. I, I, I love oh Paul. Oh my God. And Paul, no. Paul can no. be great on a team, but he's not a fit for this team. He's go, just go, too slow. Yeah, I mean, he needs to go find a championship caliber team 
and just go hang out with them. Seriously. And he can I mean, still put up points. He can still do his job. The only thing that kind of gives me hope is Jimmy Butler and Bobby Portis. Because Bobby Portis yeah. is a monster on the offensive boards. I was watching him against the Cavs. He was just grabbing them one-handed. Like, there was one possession where he had two, and he, c- he couldn't finish it, even though he was under the basket. But still, like, <laughs> like Bobby Portis gives me hope. But Absolutely. outside of that... I don't really trust. I mean, outside of him and Jimmy Butler, I don't trust this. And I mean, once Jimmy's contract up, and he might see that this team really doesn't want to go for anything, and they haven't, he might. Yeah, leave. I say, what does he have? What like what kind of trust does he have in this organization if he's watching them not build around him? Well, exactly. Well, Jimmy Butler, we got till twenty twenty on the Jimmy Butler front. Doesn't matter mm-hmm. if you're Still. a star and you're gonna be Look unhappy in a city where it's like. I'm just saying, we got a little bit of a while before we talk about yeah, Jimmy but Butler Jimmy getting to but- the end. Jimmy Butler's already vocal about his not mm-hmm. happiness for the head coach, not happiness for the organization. It's well, like, that's things that are going to change. Like, yeah, that's, how's that going to change if they don't do anything? Well, that's, that's my something. Thing. He's saying that to get the change to, let's say, maybe, hey, let's get a different head coach. It's not him saying it like, I want to leave kind of a thing. Yeah, but why would he want to be there? Mm-hmm. That's going to turn quickly for him. I think if the Bulls continue with this route of non-action and you know putting their cards in the hands of Derrick Rose, the Bulls need to make Jimmy Butler the priority. They do. Yeah, which well, the, yeah, he, he is it, the priority. I'll be honest. I mean, the only um, the only reason Bulls fans, you can see it. The only reason why we, and I, I'll admit, a little part of me too wants Derrick Rose to be the guy. The only reason is we're hanging on to this kind of lost hope that the hometown kid is going to bring us to the promised land. Ain't gonna and happen, that though. ship has sailed. I mean, yeah. unless he's a bench player. He's not going to be the star of this team right. anymore. I mean, I, I I love D. Rose. I love what he's done, but he's 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 not what he used to be. He's not the MVP anymore. He is uh, he's he's just D Rose. Mm-hmm. He's you might he might be healthy, he might not be, and then he might he might be a star player or he might put up 9 points per game and like 3 assists. 